say she does primarily physical damage. What I mean is she does like 80% true damage and like 20% physical damage. Riot has given her a difficulty rating of 3, which I do not agree with. I think it's more along the lines of 2. And while this champ does need some time to master, once you understand the power spikes and what you can ability. I mean, you literally have a Jogoth ult on your Q on a 3 second cooldown. It doesn't get much, uh, much easier than that. Riot's given her a damage rating of 3, when in actuality it should almost be a 4. A toughness rating of 2. A crowd control rating of 2. A mobility of 2. abilities. Her Q is an auto attack reset that does physical damage on the first cast and true damage on the second cast that scales with her attack damage. So the later in the game that you get, the more bruiser items you get, the more true damage you get. Which in actuality, towards the late game, you are literally doing a Jogath ult on a 3 second cooldown. Her W, she throws out a cone that deals damage, and if it hits a champion, it also heals her. Her E, she shoots out a tightrope, basically, like Attack on Titan. And if she hits an enemy champion on the second proc of it, it will stun them. Basically, once you master this ability on Camille, you're good to go. And then her ultimate, she locks someone in a cage prison while also doing a small amount of magic damage and keeps them in there until she either exits the prison or dies. And on this initial bout, she will also knock away any enemy champions surrounding the target she selects and will knock them out. Pretty ridiculous. And then the passive, based on what her champion enemy character that she is playing against is doing more of, she gets a physical or magic damage shield based on her maximum health. So you build bruiser items that give you HP and survivability as well as damage and you just become a freak. An uncontrollable, uncontainable freak. If you guys aren't seeing what I'm throwing out there, I'm saying this character is really broken. Camille, uh, her skins, we've got Program Camille. Coven, or Coven Camille, IG Camille, and that's it, pretty basic, now let's go to her lore guys, Camille the Steel Shadow, Clan Pharos understands sacrifice, most of the family's wealth came through harvesting a rare crystal from the Bracken, from the Bracken, a creature native to Shirima. These hex crystals, or first crystals, contained power normally only wielded by those born with innate magical ability. After Camille's great-great-aunt lost an arm during an early expedition, her sacrifice inspired the Pharaoh's family motto, For family will I give. The Brackern were a limited resource, and Camille's family had to augment the crystals they'd accumulated utilizing shadow investments in chemtech and runic alchemy. They developed less powerful but easier to make synthetic hex crystals, yet there were consequences. Synthetic crystal manufacturing has long been rumored to heavily contribute to the Zon Grey. Furthermore, it was only through espionage, intimidation, and murder that Clan Pharos held its monopoly on the priceless commodity and ensured its uninterrupted production in Zon. 
maintaining the family's place in Biltover's illustrious Blue Wind Court. As the eldest surviving child of Clan Pharaoh's masters, Camille received every educational advantage. She had exceptional tutors, learning to speak several foreign languages and play the Celevina at a concert master level. Camille also learned to read and write ancient Shuriman while assisting her father on digs in the Odin Valley. Traditionally, one of the younger children would become their family's principal intelligencer, working with the clan master to secure their family's success by any means necessary. However, Camille's younger brother, Stephen, had a weak constitution, and so Camille took his place. He jealously, wa jealously watched her embrace her additional training, and she became quite adept in combat, uh, reconnaissance, and derogation. When Camille was 25, augmented Sonite thugs attacked her and her father, intent on stealing lucrative trade secrets. Camille's father succumbed to his wounds and in anguish her mother died soon after. Stephen became clan master and he doubted the clan's research in human next tech augmentation, eager to prove himself as a strong leader. After a year of mourning, Stephen oversaw the induction of Hakim Nadari, a promising young Christo crystallographer from the Shuriman coastal city of Belzoon as his as the family's lead artificer. Camille requested Hextech augmentation from Hakim to push her beyond her human limitations. Hakim was intensely enamored with her and they bonded over the preparations and late night stories of Shurima. And eventually, Camille returned Hakim's feelings. Their affection grew reckless and they knew the surgery would conclude their time together. Hakim would move on to other and Camille would once again be fully committed to the principal intelligencer's duties. More than that, Akim worried that carving away at Camille's heart he might remove her humanity. Days before Akim's, uh, Camille's operation, Akim proposed marriage and begged her to run away with him. For the first time in her life, Camille was torn. Stephen had no such conflict as he needed Camille to execute his vision. When he learned of the secret proposal, he devised a plan. The next time Camille and Hakim were together, Stephen set himself, set himself up to be attacked. When she saw her brother bruised and bloodied, Camille recognized what could happen when her attention was divided. Hakim pleaded with Camille, but she wouldn't listen. For family she would give, she ended her relationship with Hakim, insisting her surgery go forward. He was the only one who could safely perform the operation, and so he excised Camille's heart and replaced it with Hextech, then resigned. When she awoke the lab she and Akim had shared when she awoke the lab she and Akim had shared was abandoned. Camille focused on her work as she took on further reinf refinements, including plated legs, grapple spin hips, and other minor hextech augmentations, leading some to wonder how much of the woman was left, and as clan pharaohs amassed more power and wealth, Camille's missions became darker and more deadly. Thanks to her hextech art, she did not age, but the years were not so kind to her brother, yet even as Stephen's body grew more frail, his iron grip on the clan remained. Eventually, Camille undercovered the depth of Stephen's betrayal, and realized his machinations were no longer in the family's best interests. In that moment, she discarded the last sentiment she'd felt towards her brother. After installing her favorite grandniece as clan master, Camille now runs the family's public affairs, as well as its more shady operations, as a solver of difficult problems. She embraces her more-than-human transformation and the cutting judgments it affords her. But a strange, mournful keening in her Hextech heart may yet prove a troubling portent. Regardless, Camille refuses to sit idle and gains invigoration from well-executed industrial espionage, a fresh brewed cup of tea, 
and long walks in the gray. Thank you guys for joining. That one was definitely a tough read, and it stretched the limitations of my uh, reading ability, that's for sure. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, and everybody, as always, stay safe.